Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, before I get started with the news stories today, with the protocols that have changed on some cruises, I, I just wanted to show, I, I just came from the mail, I got some things in the mail, I just want to quickly show you what I got. Some people were asking me if I framed that letter that I received from the Princess Cruise member. Yes, I did. It's right there. And then... I got this I also got an amazing calendar that I am going to make room for somebody drew me a lovely picture which I have to go get a new frame for now I just picked up the other frame and then I also got this in the mail Really, really cute, but the funniest part is, do you read what it says? It says, did you say something about my wife? Yeah, and if you know that story from Florida, <laughs> that's funny. So Princess Cruise Lines has updated their protocols for longer sailings. A lot of people, remember when you couldn't book anything longer than seven days? Well, you can now, but many, many cruise lines weren't doing very long cruises. You know, you were lucky to find an eight or a nine day cruise. Now Princess Cruises has come up with their protocols for longer cruises, including testing, uh, your insurance, etc. One of the big things is that Princess is one of those first cruise lines that are going into those long cruises full steam. The Enchanted Princess in November is starting to do 20-day cruises. The, uh, not the island, the Caribbean Princess will be doing 21-day cruises. The um, Emerald Princess is doing a 15-day Panama Canal cruise this month in a few days. And those are longer cruises. So they're now coming up with protocols for those longer cruises. And there is some wording in some of the final documentation that has changed from the way the wording was previously. So I thought we should all be aware of some of these things, especially, you know, longer cruises obviously have a greater chance of something happening on the cruise, right? You could be assigned a dinner place with somebody who catches COVID and you're a close contact on a 15-day cruise or a 20-day cruise. It's much, much more possible, say, than on a three- or a four-day cruise. Chances are you're getting on and you're getting off before anything happens, right? So let's go over some of these protocols that have come out. They're good, but there are some things you should really keep an eye out on. So here's the new update. If you go onto the Princess Protocols, this is the latest update they have. And it says, for select cruises, including Panama Canal, full transits, and voyages 15 days or longer, guests will likely have a COVID-19 test administered three to five days into your voyage. They say likely. They don't say must. They say likely will have this. For voyages 15 days or, and longer specifically, Guests will be tested every seven days. So once a week, you will get an extra test. So if you're on a 30-day cruise, expect to have four tests during that cruise, plus the one to get off the ship, plus the one to get on the ship. <laughs> so that's that's a lot of testing to make sure that you know everybody is is good. And I I I, I don't and it the big thing is it's at no cost to us, right? They're not charging us anything extra for those tests. So that's good. These tests will be scheduled and administered by the onboard medical team and will be provided on a complimentary basis. Now here's where we get the interesting stuff. So positive COVID-19 cases will be assessed and treated either in their stateroom or in a designated area of the medical center in a single occupancy ward. So. Most of the cruise ships now in the medical center have a blocked off area that they've expanded for COVID cases and they're individual staterooms. They're not family staterooms, they're individual staterooms. And for more severe cases, that's where you would be moved. 
possible cases that do not require admission to the ship, to the ship's medical center or medical disembarkation will most likely be moved to a different cabin for the duration of their isolation. On the Majestic Princess, the floor above me on deck nine had one quarter of the cabins on that floor were all blocked off that you couldn't get down. The, the, the flood doors were, were sealed, uh, security doors were sealed. You could not get down there. That was designated rooms for COVID where they would be able to have everybody in their hazmat suits, the cleaning systems, the room service. They wouldn't be going back and forth amongst other passengers. They would only be in the area where COVID cases are. So it keeps it completely separate from everybody else on the ship. In fact, there were cases on the ship and nobody on the ship had any idea. So that's how much easier it is now. And, and, and that's a good thing as well to have that isolation area. If you or your family members, traveling companions or other close contacts are quarantined or medically isolated during the voyage as a result of a positive COVID-19 test or are suspected of having COVID-19, you're entitled to a 100% future cruise credit for the missed days, including your time in quarantine for you, your travel party, and any confirmed closed cases, if any of you test positive during your cruise. So you're not going to be getting refunded all your money. You are now getting a future cruise credit. Also, it's from the time that you test positive as opposed to the time where your whole cruise. So if you test positive on the second last day of the cruise, you're getting two days worth of your money back. You're not getting the whole 15 days back, which is, is a change from the way it used to read. This testing policy will be reviewed on a regular basis as the global situation continues to evolve. Anyone who doesn't comply with the onboard public health measures may be disembarked at the first available opportunity. So you test positive COVID, you refuse to be isolated. This concerns you. If you're the one who says, nope, I'm not gonna be quarantined and I refuse to do it. Uh, other consequences could include being denied service, required stateroom isolation and being banned from sailing in the future. That's not, that's not one of those, oh, we're gonna move you to an isolation room and you're okay. That's one of them where they're forcibly putting you into confinement on a ship. You're basically being under house arrest. If you are non-compliant, no refund for your cruise fare or unused cruise days or travel expenses if you're flying home will be covered because they will cover your, if you catch COVID on board, you have to be isolated, you miss your flights and everything, they still cover that part of your trip. If your travel party is impacted and or they are required or voluntarily chose to leave with you, the same policies will be applied to them. So you test positive, you're unruly, you're getting off the ship, your traveling companions decide to go with you, they don't get refunded their money or their traveling expenses as well. There will be no refund or cruise fare or unused cruise days or coverage of travel expenses home. So that's a big one to keep an eye on for. That is on you, right? If you're unruly on there or you refuse to follow their medical guidance, basically you're giving up your rights to your money back. Um, you can take from the court and spend money to try and get your money back, but it's much easier to just at that point, just take your loss, go to the room and get your money back. Now. Before I get into the other ramifications on this, let me just invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Really does help the channel out. It tells YouTube, hey, people are interested in this type of content. Let's share it to more people, see who else is interested. And I would really, really appreciate it. It doesn't cost anything. It just tells you, hey, there's another video out. That's all it really does. Well, the far reaching ramifications. Well, it used to read, that you would get your full refund if you tested positive during your cruise. Now on these ones, they are now saying, you're only going to get a refund for the amount of cruise that you missed after testing positive. 
that's a bigger, bigger chunk of money. Now you can also extrapolate that as they are getting ready to go forward. They're going to have longer and longer cruises. Transatlantics are starting up again. Transpacifics are starting up again. Much longer cruises are out there and the cruise lines are going, hey, if somebody gets on a ship for 30 days and they test positive on the second day, we're going to give them back 30 days worth of money on the cruise when they've had 28 days on the cruise. So in a cruise line's thought process, they're going, well, we'll cover what they're missing. We'll still cover their expenses, their medical stuff if they catch COVID on the ship. But yeah, if you, if you did 28 out of 30 days and enjoyed your cruise and were drinking and celebrating and partaking in everything, then you're not missing out on anything on your cruise. And I can, I can kind of actually go along with that for these longer cruises. A, a four-day cruise or a five-day cruise, that would be a different thing. But this update is only for cruises 15 days or longer. So if you're on a shorter cruise, check out what their refund policies are and their timelines are if you test positive on the ship. This goes for every cruise line. Find out what they're covering, who's being covered, is it your whole travel party, what the refund policy is, is it money, is it, is it future cruise credits, what is it? Because there are a lot. Remember, uh, many of these cruise lines have world cruises, 170 days in some cases, and they're definitely not going to refund a hundred thousand dollar world cruise if you test positive on your second last day of the cruise <laughs> that that wouldn't make a lot of sense financially for the cruise line so i just yeah keep that in mind everybody uh protocols are still changing out there but it really pays to keep an eye on those new updates that they put out every day when you go into the cruise lines and you're checking for their uh, health protocols, keep an eye on the wording update. Just look for all, scan all the way down. They'll be highlighted in bold. It'll say update. And then you can check out and make sure that your cruise is unaffected. Because my cruise, this came out two days ago now. I think it came out on the 8th or 9th. And I'm leaving on the 14th. So this literally came out less than a week before my actual cruise and oh yeah, this is the first cruise that ship is taking since the pandemic and they're still changing protocols going into it. So yeah, we really have to keep an eye on it. It's that buyer beware situation. Make sure that you're checking every possible thing you can so you're not surprised going on your cruise. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. To see more tips, more tricks, more travel blogs from around the world, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.